Welcome to this video lecture. This is Mark Scythian, FAA licensed aerospace technician, airframe, power plant, and avionics certified. The date today is August 14, 2017. The title of this lecture is DC Series Parallel Complex Electrical Circuit Analysis. In this lecture you will learn how to calculate the variables involved in a direct current series parallel complex electrical circuit. DC series electrical circuits maintain constant current whereas DC parallel electrical circuits maintain constant voltage. In the real world machinery and electronics may be regulated by DC electrical and electronic circuits that are both series and parallel also known as complex DC electrical circuits. When a DC resistor or equivalent DC digital resistance control system is in series, it will allow for a voltage drop. Conversely, when a DC resistor or equivalent DC digital resistance control system is in parallel, it will allow for a specific current draw. In a basic sense, in regards to analog DC parallel electrical circuits, Physical resistors are present which can be installed and removed by means of soldering and desoldering for repair or customization purposes based on required resistor ohm specifications. However, in the present day, DC circuits are not analog circuits but are digital circuits which contain operational amplifiers MOSFETs, programmable logic circuits, also known as PLCs, and digital wireless interfaces allowing for programming to change resistor specifications without actual physical interaction of the circuit. Digital signals processors, crystalline central processing unit units, and PLCs allow for software control of DC parallel electrical circuits. Values then quantified using binary base 2 logarithm mathematics instead of decimal analog mathematics. Regardless to how advanced DC electrical circuits become, they are still bound by Ohm's law. Now let's proceed to two DC series parallel complex electrical circuit analysis problems. Calculate the data below for the given DC series parallel circuit. Here we have a DC voltage supply, a total voltage of 48 volts DC in direct current, electrons move from positive to negative in that one-way direction. So starting at the positive, the voltage will flow, actually the power will flow on a series circuit, flow through a resistor in which a voltage drop occurs, and then that voltage will go to parallel where the parallel circuit will have a current draw. Since this is a series circuit for the start point, the, the current will remain constant, only the voltage will fluctuate. Since these are parallel pathways, the voltage will stay constant. However, we have a current draw here, so after you have a current draw when a parallel pathway crosses a series, the amperes will no longer remain constant as it was through R1, but, but will drop and be somewhat less at R3. <clears throat> so when the power, uh, which is equal to voltage times current, flows through the series resistors at R1 and R9, a voltage drop will occur, which is subtracted from the 48, and whatever is left then flows to the parallel where the voltage is constant here. 
But Ohm's law is E, which is voltage, is equal to I, which is current, times R, which is resistance. So volts is equal to amps times Ohm's resistance. So algebraically, you can also solve for amps and also for resistance as well as voltage. So the mechanics of parallel circuits crossing series circuits is such that the current will remain constant, only the voltage will drop on the series, but then the parallel will have constant voltage where the current draw will occur, decreasing the amount of current to the next resistor on the series pathway. So we must account for the current going through the series adjacent resistors flowing along the parallel pathways. So after there is a current draw, we have another current that's less than at R1 going into R3 and R8, which causes a voltage drop subtracted from the 48. What I, it should be less than 48 when it goes to R3 and R8, but then after the voltage drop at R3 and R8, we'll have less voltage going here, which remains constant, then current draw. So we'll have less current going to R5 and R7 compared to R3 and R8, and then a voltage drop. But then here we go into a series pathway. So what you must do in order to solve this circuit in the most practical and simple manner is you have to calculate the total resistance involved in this given complex DC circuit. That is, a, uh, that is achieved by implementing the rules for combining resistors in parallel as well as in series. From the previous lecture, you know that adding resistors in series is cumulative. However, when you add resistors in parallel, you can either use the product sum rule or the inverse sum rule as you see in the previous parallel and series DC electrical circuit analysis lectures. So what we must do is start on the right side here and ignore all these resistors. Just start from R5, R6, and R7. These are in series, so add them together. 4, 8, 12, 12, 24. So now these three become one resistor at 24 Combined in, par combined in parallel with R4. Since, since there's only two, we can use the product sum rule. So 24 times 12 divided into 24 plus 12, whatever that equals, then eliminates all of these resistors and we're left with just R3, R4, R R8. So whatever that equals, we then add in series to R3 and R8. And then we repeat the process combining R2 and the combination resistance achieved so far using the product sum rule. So the numerator, you multiply the combined resistance times the R2 divided into adding the combined resistance to R2. Whatever that equals, you're left with a combined resistance here. And then you add that in series to R1 and R9. Whatever you get is the total resistance. Then you can solve for the total current, I is equal to total voltage divided into total resistance. That gets you a certain total current. So that would be the current that flows from the source to R1 and R9, which caused the voltage drop. That voltage then goes to R2. R2 takes a current draw away from that source voltage and R1 and R9 take away from the source voltage. R2 takes away from the source current, the total current. And then you have a lower current compared to R1 and R9 going to R3 and R8. Voltage drop, subtracted from the previous voltage drop. Eventually, you'll have a current draw here. And then you just have to solve for the voltage drops in series. So by the time you go through all of these, you will have zero voltage left. So it will 
fl it will volt it will have a voltage drop equal to the source or total voltage. Same thing with the current draw. That should equal when you add them all up. That should equal the total current as well. So that's observing Kirchhoff's law, which states that the total amount of current draws and voltage drops in the circuit will equal the source voltage in the source source current. Now in terms of power dissipation, again it's just P power, like a DC electrical power, P is equal to I amps times V volts. So you just simply multiply the current times the voltage to calculate the power dissipation per resistor. And also if you add up all of the power dissipations at all the resistors, it will equal the total power. So the total voltage times the total current will equal the total power. So all the power dissipations at all the resistors will also equal the total power. When you subtract them all out, you should get zero for everything, which proves that the circuit analysis was done correctly. Repetition and practice and these types of circuits is required to eventually gain proficiency and then circuit analysis for complex DC circuits becomes something that's not very difficult to understand. So what I will do here is it will be redundant if I go over every little calculation. So if you want to draw this out and copy it, go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to scroll down and show you the calculations step by step. And if you want to pause that uh, as you go through the calculations, you can then see the mechanics and order of operation so that eventually you get the hang of it. So we're going to calculate these variables here for the circuit to define it and conduct proper circuit analysis for a DC complex electrical circuit. Now we'll move on to the next DC complex circuit. This is something that you'll run into in the real world 
when scopes and diagnostics fails to detect the exception to the rule. This might be some sort of a electrical bus that connects relays and solenoids. Very rarely will you have to do any circuit analysis in digital electronics, especially with PLCs, uh, plug-and-play systems on machinery and electronics, but it's always good to have a proficiency in circuit analysis for DC complex electrical circuits. So here's something that you will run into in your tech college or your studies, and many people like to brush this type, this particular problem aside, but it's really not that hard once you get the mechanics understood. So if you could handle the previous problem through rigorous and repetitive practice, then this one is really going to test your proficiency because most of it is similar to the previous problem, but you have a series pathway branching into parallel then you have a parallel branching into parallel. So if you know the rules for series circuits, the current will remain constant. Only a voltage drop will occur in series. But in parallel, you have constant current, but with a current draw. So here, you know that after whatever current draw happens at R4, there will be less current going to R5 and R6 than R3, R5, R6, and R11 actually. But if you look at the rules here, the current must remain constant at R5. The, the, the current entering R5, R6, R11, will enter R5 and R6, but then they will fraction themselves, so they become a sum. And when you add it back together, the current going in, branching, and coming back out will be equal. So what does this tell you? Is that you will have voltage drops occurring, but the voltage drops will be cumulative, whereas the current draws will be split. So this one throws people off. So as for solving for the total resistance in a circuit like this, you would start at R9, R10, add these two together, and then combine R7, R8, so 14 times 8 divided into 14 plus 8, whatever that equals, then combined with a sum of 9 plus 6, so 15, combined with R7, R8, whatever that equals, product sum rule, multiply the top, divide, uh, add on the bottom, and then you've combined all these resistors into one pathway, and then you combine these two, and then you add that to whatever you get combined here to the series R11. Now you have a combined R5, 6, 11, 7, 8, 9 and 10 here combined with the sum of R3, R4, R12 then you can come back and combine with first combine these two add them and then combine it with the sum and then you're left with a total resistance so it's not that easy to just lecture on it you need to really practice these problems and uh, make your mistakes and go back and look at the answers but the mechanics of the circuit analysis once you get that understood the concepts actually then it's just practice so this is not really hard it just takes a little practice but the tricky part is that these are series pathways and then you have like a parallel you actually have a series split on series, series split and series, and then a parallel split and parallel. But you treat this as if it is a parallel because you combine it, and then you get a combined resistance, and then you calculate what the voltage drop is there, and then after that you can take the 
voltage constants and then divide out for the fractional ratio between the two. So it'll split, amperes will fracture, or they'll fraction, and then they'll combine back together. So it is uh, very similar here, and then when you get here, remember you have constant voltage, so then you have to then calculate the I at each R8, R7, and then split that voltage across both of them. And this one really kind of screws people up because they get really good at it and then they're like wait a second and so it's like you start thinking too much and you basically got to look at the constant voltage going here and then split the amps and you have the constant amps and split the volts you have to do it like that and really I could go on talking and uh, throwing lingo but still you need the practice so this is just the basic uh, lecture on the mechanics of it now what I will do this is kind of a long circuit analysis, so uh, draw this out and feel free, to, feel free to redraw it when you do combination. So go ahead, if you want to, go ahead and copy this down or screen shoot it or write it down, however you want to do it. And then I will just uh, scroll the calculations down here and you can pause it anytime you want to keep up with it at your own pace. So again, we're going to solve for these variables to define the circuit and make the correct circuit analysis calculations.
Thank you for watching this video and have a great day.